I'm really excited for today's guest. He does stand up. He also produces tons of shows, but he's also known, from what I read, the godfather of the Sunset Strip. And we're going to talk about how that came about. But he's helped out a lot of people in their <laughs> careers, including my my own. I like to welcome Jay Davis. Hey man, thank you guys Woo! for having me. Oh, what an honor to be yeah, here! Thanks yeah. you guys for having me. Thank appreciate you for coming it. on. I, yeah, it's great we to be here. Appreciate it too. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought of you like as one of our guests to come for uh, on this season because uh, you you've inspired me so much and and you've also helped me. But I, I I see the way you help other people too, like other comedians that are that 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 are trying, but also people that are headliners that you've helped throughout like the beginning of their career and now they're just blossoming and and uh, what's that like man and how did you get into that you know it's like weird it's like I came out here to be an actor and then um you know originally what's funny when I was a kid out of high school I was taking a year off to figure out what I wanted to do um, where are you from if you oh, okay yeah let me I'm originally from South Florida Okay. So I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, Delray Beach, Florida. My sister is four, five years older than me, so she had just graduated college when I graduated high school, right? And um, I, I, I like surfing. I was a surfer, and I, I, I lived in a tourist town, so I was always in the hotel business since a kid. So I thought that's something I'd want to do, maybe go run a resort in Hawaii and surf. And then I started thinking, well, if you're in the hotel business, you're working 24 hours. I'd rather stay in those hotels, right? <laughs> but I thought I was going to go in the hotel and restaurant business, but I wasn't sure. And my dad's like, hey, you know what? Maybe you should just take a year off, figure out what you want to do, drive your sister to California to this American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and you can take her there and surf for a year and figure out what you want to do if you want to go to hotel school whatever figure it out that's so cool that and then i was like that yeah yeah know? and then when i got there i saw these like hot girls at this like a uh, school like fame and i'm like this looks <laughs> cool like i want to do this You're like, right? i'll stick around here yeah. i'm signing <laughs> like, up sign me up <laughs> i always wanted to be on the a team you know what i mean like i didn't know <laughs> acting because you know, I didn't do extracurricular activities in high school because I would go straight to the beach. Like, you know, waves yeah. or not, I was always at the beach skateboarding mm. or surfing. And uh, I didn't do drama and all that stuff like my sister did. But I was like, this drama stuff looks cool. Like, I've always loved uh, Matt Locke. And, <laughs> and uh, I could do that. I always thought I should be like the kid on the A-team. Oh, Remember you watch the A-team? The one yeah. thing they're missing is like a foster kid. I could be <laughs> shooting watermelons at people, you know? <laughs> all they have to do is put beautiful women into any scene. Oh, yeah. And men will sign up. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's uh, it. Yeah. Like, yeah. How can I help? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm I, here to work. <laughs> <laughs> so I go in and uh, I tell the teacher, hey, I mean, not, the head of the school was there. I just dropped my sister off. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'd really like to come to this school. And she goes, oh, it's an audition process. It's been over for three months. I go, so uh, why can't I audition right now? She goes, I don't think you understand. It's over. You got to audition to come to this school. I'm like, well, what, aren't you the head of the school? She's like, yeah. I go, well, let me audition for you. Dude, and then she pet. just starts laughing. No way. She starts laughing. She goes, really? I go, she goes, but school starts Monday. I go, well, today's Friday. <laughs> I'll sign I up. I go, I've never done this before, but tell me what to do. Yeah. And then she just liked me, and she gave me a monologue book, said, learn one of these monologues. I think she liked your back. persistence, your charisma, like, you know, like. Yeah, so I come, really engaging. I come back in and I memorize this whole thing with my sister, and then uh, I'd never done it before. So I go into her office. She's sitting behind the desk. There's two chairs like this. And I sit in the chair, and she goes, "Okay, I want you to look in that chair and pretend like somebody's there and do your monologue." Oh God! And I'm like, "Well, that's weird. Why can't I just do it to you since okay. you're there? Because it would feel more oh. real for me." She's like, "No, no, no. That's not acting. You got to pretend someone's in the chair." And I'm thinking, "This is dumb. I don't know if I want to do it, but I couldn't remember my lines." And then I'm like, just kept saying, can I please do it to you? And she's like, starts laughing the whole time. So you bombed. I you bombed. bombed. Yeah. Hard. Uh. And I told my sister, there's no way. Like two <laughs> hours later, she's like, you start Monday. Whoa. Yeah. You still got the gig. Yeah. Or and then I realized. What, what do you think did it? Holy well, shit. Well, it's 8,000 a year. And when I got into yeah. my class, it was like the bad news bears of acting. You know, they put me in the, 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 the short bus class. Because yeah, yeah. you know? <laughs> I was like, I think everybody got in that audition. You know, <laughs> they try to make it like you have to audition. Yeah. I think if you got the money, you can get in, right? Yeah. Wow. That's what I think. Uh, and then How long did I, you stay there for? Uh, let's see. I was only there for a year. My okay. sister ended up um, getting um, a boyfriend who she married secretively because he was from Canada. Oh, no way. And uh, everyone thought he was just trying to get a green card. But they got married like at the courthouse to help him get a green card. But they stayed married and had three kids. So, yeah, so it nice. worked out. But she moved out. So I was by myself. And that's when I uh, I needed a roommate. So back then, this is like 
what year was that? Like 89? Yeah. So, or no, yeah, like 89, 80, 89. 90, maybe. 90, 88, 89. Okay. So there's no cell phones, no computers. Like I literally had a skateboard and my sister had to share the van that we had. So she had that. I would just skateboard around Arcadia because the school was in Pasadena. We were staying in Arcadia. But the summer school students were coming in. So you put a list of people, you know, like, through the school of people from all over the country that are wanting to come out and find a place to live, they go through the school to contact you. It yeah. was like a classified thing that the students could be like, hey, I need a place to stay. You could check in with the school classified. So yeah. I put an ad that I'm looking for a roommate because I can't afford this little apartment by myself. And I started getting some calls and, and one guy called from Tennessee and he was like, hey man, I heard you're looking for a roommate. I go, I, I am. And he goes, okay. Um, well, I'm coming out there for summer school, and I've called about four or five people and uh, talking to you. You seem like the coolest guy of Absolutely, all of them. Absolutely, dude. <laughs> you know, and uh, you seem cool. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I'm thinking maybe to make you my roommate. I'm like, okay. Yeah, it was pretty cool. He came in, and, and uh, we became roommates at that time. And then he was going to the summer school to be an actor at that time. And, yeah. uh, it's and it's crazy for roommates. me to think of Johnny Knoxville the way he is now, or the way he, I've seen him, like you know, through through throughout Jackass, that he went to school. I was like, going to say acting. I didn't even know he went to school for acting. I thought mm -hmm. he just he wanted to, and he wanted to get into acting a different way, and that's why he came to Big Brother and started doing the stuff with us. But yeah, I he guess originally he did. Yeah, he originally I think wanted to be an actor. He was in a Taco Bell commercial. Yeah. So I remember that one. Yeah. And then so then from there, <clears throat> we're, we're roommates for a minute. And then we both realized like we were going out into Hollywood and partying at night and stuff. And from Arcadia. Out from Arcadia. Wow. And it was a long drive. And then, you know, they told us that we weren't, we weren't allowed to audition. And we're thinking, why are we in acting class way over here in Pasadena and Arcadia when all the jobs and auditions yeah. are in Hollywood? Yeah. So we both made a decision like, let's find a place in Hollywood. Like, let's quit this school and go to Hollywood. So yeah. we actually moved to Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, we made the move together from uh, quit the school and go over to Hollywood Boulevard. Were together. you guys still roommates again? Yeah, like we stayed roommates. We, okay. we made the move to Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, we lived on Hollywood Boulevard. And then we had a couple other roommates. We had this guy, Scott, was a roommate, like a straggling roommate that was hanging around. And he was the guy getting all the jobs. Like he was getting every commercial. He looked like Tom Cruise. Mm, and uh, uh, he yeah. was getting all the jobs. And, you know, we were auditioning for like, I, I did a Disney after school special. I think Knoxville got like a, a Bud Light commercial around that time. Yep. And he was starting to get a couple of commercials. Yeah. He got Taco Bell. I remember that yeah. one. Yeah. And then, um, and then uh, this other roommate came later named Zon McLaren, who, who blew up as an actor, too. He's in that new movie with, um, shoot, I, I should have remembered the name of the movie. Uh, it's about the girl who's trying to help this kid who's a virgin. It was recently out. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, no yeah, No, no Hard Feeling. He plays the lawyer, the American yeah, Indian lawyer. That's okay. one of our other roommates, okay. right? No way. So... Um, yeah, so he, they, we were all in and out of that, that place. And then what's crazy is the one that was getting all the work, they then became homeless. Like, he, he got on drugs real bad. And somehow, no that, like, the, the good-looking guy ended up, like, I don't the know, on, on drugs. Yeah. It always And then happens. even, even uh, Knoxville saw him once, and he was, uh, he goes, bro, because I'd run into Knoxville per periodically around town. He's like, I saw Scott, man. I was like, it looks like Scott. And it was the homeless guy. And. He, he remembered me and I gave him like some money and stuff. I felt yeah. bad for him. He was homeless. So oh, it's dude. crazy. Like how, how, you know, some yeah. guys go Just homeless. Like that, it's dude. crazy. I got a, a side question of um, which house was it? Was it the one in Arcadia or was it the one on Hollywood Boulevard where Knox told me while you were sleeping, you would sleep like with your eyes fully open but you would be sleeping, and then he heard you like scream bloody murder one night <clears throat> that Jesus stole your wallet. Bro, I'm not even lying. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Bro, I've got, yeah. I've got, dude, I've got what's called parasomnia. Like, Par it was really bad back parasomnia. then. Parasomnia. Parasomnia is, uh, okay, some people either have night terrors. Okay. Or they have... Um, 
sleepwalking. You can't usually have both. Okay. I have night terrors and sleepwalking at the same exact time. Oh, and what's crazy wow. is it looks like I'm awake, yes. but I'm still sleeping. So what happens is it's crazy. My dreams come alive in the room. It's okay. like hallucinogenic, you know? Got it. Yeah, My yeah, dreams yeah. come alive. So these, these entities come out in the room and like I'm sleeping, but it looks like I'm awake. It freaks people out. Like well, before Knoxville, actually, I did have another kid come in. I forgot to tell you this, and he he was like Screech. He looked like Screech from uh, from that show, okay. uh, Save yeah. Bell, right? Yeah, saved, yeah. So he's like, hey, yeah, can you swear? I never lived on my own. You know, we're like 18, yeah. 19 yeah, yeah. years old. He's like, yeah, it's my first time living on my own. Yeah. Yeah. And he was from Arcadia because like that was a kid that came in, and like within two weeks or three weeks, bro, I had a night terror with that kid. And like, I, it's like uh, something was stabbing me to death like 13 times. It was like a horror movie, bro. And we used to like dorm the rooms up. So we slept in the same room no. with like beds against the wall. <laughs> and all of a sudden, like he, just hears, like he just hears like, right? And then it was so loud, someone called the 911 and shit. <laughs> And then, you know, when I wake up from it, when I wake up from it, I, I feel like everything's normal. Yeah. So like, oh, shit, I just had another nightmare. Okay. And then I'm looking for my roommate. I don't see him anywhere. And all I hear is... <laughs> and there's a kid crawl. He's in a ball in the corner going... <laughs> oh. He thought someone was murdering me. Oh, my and, uh, God. I'm like, hey, bro, I'm sorry. I just had a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, man... I'm, I'm freaking out. Why didn't you tell me you have these things? Like, this guy was going to sue me over it. No Yeah, he way. got out of there that, that night. He moved. Oh, wow. So, freaked him out. So our, the cops came. I was too embarrassed to go to the door. There's yeah. flashlights everywhere, helicopter. What? Someone thought someone was murdered. Oh, my God. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> I made him. You were the weirdo on the block because like, there's cops. I made I made him answer the door. I made him answer the door. It was terrible, and the cops came in. And they're like, oh, "Sorry, I had a nightmare." They looked around. Yeah, so that's when he moved out. That's when Knoxville came in. I guess I should have told people, yeah, I'm not gay, but I do have night terrors. <laughs> I might kill you in your sleep. <laughs> wow. But then another incident. This is the worst one, though, dude. That gets worse. Okay. So, now, Knoxville, myself, and this guy Zahn, who's the he plays the lawyer in that movie. Okay, we're all living on Hollywood Boulevard, and uh, some guys are in the living area. I'm out here. Well, I'm sleeping this night. Uh, Knoxville might have been gone already. It might have just been Zahn and I at that point, because Knoxville okay. took off, got his own place after he had had a baby. Yeah. Okay. So now it's just Zahn and I. Yeah. And. Uh, Bro, like four in the morning, I have a crazy nightmare. And we're on like the third floor. I punch out the window in my sleep. And it just, when I came back in, it gashed me real hard here. Yeah. And the blood was squirting out like a like a murder <laughs> scene. And we had one of those old 60s lampshades. It was full blood squirt. Like someone just, it yeah. looked like a murder. Yeah, yeah. Blood everywhere. I'm bleeding to death. Literally. It's just flying out of my arm. <laughs> And this guy wakes up. I'm still kind of dreaming. He has to tackle me and wake me up. Oh, my it's God. There's blood everywhere. There's blood on him, blood on me. Yeah. He's smart enough to, like, wrap it up, put a towel over it. I pass out. He has to carry me. So he's carrying me to my car because he only had a Harley Davidson at the time. <laughs> so I had this old car. <laughs> Right, and there was like no gas yeah. in the car. I had oh, just geez. enough. He got me to the hospital. He carried, so he's carrying a, my body. Out, and he said, like, I was just like passed out and stuff. Yeah. And like, I was like, it was oh, crazy. Yeah. And, and then he saved your he life. He saved my life, bro. I would have died. He yeah. saved my life. So now there's glasses broken. It was another scream like last time. Okay. But now this time there's blood everywhere. Yeah. And someone saw him carrying the body down. Uh, Cops right. get called again. Get this, bro. This guy's got an audition the next day for a big movie. He's carrying me at five in the morning, four four thirty in the morning. Takes me to Cedar Sinai, drops me off. Right, takes me to the emergency room. Comes they threw back. me. Comes back, runs out of gas in my car because I had no gas in it. Has to walk like three miles okay. to get a can. He had no wallet because it was an emergency. Had to borrow money. To get like three, it took forever, right? Oh, damn. Comes back, 
to the apartment. As he rolls up, the helicopters, cops are everywhere. They draw the guns on him and throw him in the dirt. Tell, Get out of the car, hands up. Everybody's guns. There's like the SWAT team and yeah. shit. The cops had come since, and they, they told him there might have been a murder. Like the, the guy carried a body out. This is the car he drove. Shut they threw up. knees into his back. Boom, threw him into the, the dirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. He's like, I swear my roommate had a nightmare. They didn't believe him. They thought, they thought like, and this guy plays like Mexican gangsters and uh -huh. stuff like, so he See, looks, a look. See, he yeah, looks like yeah, someone yeah. that, you know, there's some, some shady yeah, stuff going yeah. on. <laughs> they might recognize him from one of the shows he was in, you know? Oh my Boom, God. They're, they're, next thing you know, poor guy was in cuffs. They put him in the back of the car. He's like, I'm telling you, he had a, a nightmare. Yeah. So the guy's like, go down to the hospital, check it. So then the cops come in, I'm getting sewed up. As they're sewing me up, yeah. the cops like, "Listen, what happened?" I go, "I had a nightmare, dude." He goes, "They start laughing." Yep, he had a nightmare. <laughs> oh, and then they let wow. my friend go. So he saved my life, and he probably didn't get that audition because of me. I'm sorry, he's on. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> yeah, crazy stuff. And then after that, I had to go to like a sleep clinic, and then these doctors would come and they would talk to me. Like three doctors at one time would look at me like, "Wow, man, when you sleep." You go like extra deep, like almost close to death. That's like weird stuff happening down there. And they were like looking at me like. Oh, like they they put shit on you and, yeah. and test your brain and how deep your sleep really is. I go deeper than anyone else. And that's when weird stuff happens. And so there's an REM. Open. It goes way deeper than a normal person. Oh, so wow. if I don't get a lot of sleep, I can have these night terrors. So I have to really watch my sleep. What's that your breathing like? during these times because they say like you know there's like sleep apnea there's different things like you know it could affect your breathing but if you're that deep how's your breathing i tell you i i know i have sleep apnea too so that's uh, okay. something I, i've got to get a, another uh, cpap machine but, yeah did that yeah. like like did that that ever affect you like when you were actually like maybe single or or, or dating someone and like they oh, slept uh, over and you, fucking, yeah. and you fucking freaked out in one of your night terrors. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> dude, one time my sister. I don't know. Like you're sleeping next to someone now. Yeah. And you, fuck. I know. Like uh, it recently happened recently, dude. I, really? They came back recently. I didn't have. If I don't sleep a lot, then I go into that deep, deep sleep. And that's when weird things happen. Yeah. That's when I see weird stuff. And I don't even know I'm doing it, bro. Like it just all of a sudden I just got these things trying to get me and i'm just like rah just recently like with um my girl now like she was on the couch even and i luckily because i come running out and freaked her out bro she wasn't happy yeah Whoa. she wasn't happy so yeah i've got to get i it, it disappeared for a long time after i almost killed myself i was able to kind of get a grip on it but are you talking about the arm the, through the windows yeah that was your, okay I, I think after that i was just like man there was another time where he, I was going to jump off the balcony because I thought I could fly. So, yeah, it was time to get one on the first floor. For It's crazy. Yeah. Have you ever uh, – so I know you're going to sleep doctors and stuff, but have you gone to – is there therapy where you've met other people who have <laughs> this too? No, I haven't. And discussed it or anything? I've not. No? That would be cool to kind of talk to other people that have the same thing. Because yeah. the doctors were looking at me like it's some kind of like – it's next They were level. looking at, yeah, like there's some like, I don't know, is this like some weird spiritual stuff going, like what's going, is it close to death, you're seeing things. Exorcist all, all, uh, Yeah. All yeah. I'm thinking about when you say that is there was a, a Nightmare on Elm Street that came out, I, I think it was like Dream Warriors, where they all had the similar, not the same dream, like nightmares, but they were all having nightmares and they were all in like kind of like this kind of AA for it, like talking about it yeah. and discussing it. And I, 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 I didn't know if that was like a Yeah, I should or... get in and meet some other people because it would or make me feel better it, about myself. Or even yeah. like get it going, you know? You know what? You're, it's a good idea. Yeah. People be, it's interesting, really. Like, I think a lot, because I've seen stuff on TV where people that do have what I have see the same type of things. Like when I was a kid, I used to sit like like sleep and then... Um, I always thought if I didn't move, like whatever I saw would just not know I was there, right? When you're little. Okay. But I yeah. remember having a nightmare and there was like this dark shadow at the end of my bed. And I'm like, open my eyes. I'm like, is that really there? See, because I could open my eyes and the dream's still going on. And I'm like, that's not, I'm going to close my eyes. I don't think it's still there. Then I look up again, it's still there. Jesus. And then all of a sudden, you see these hands come down right at your throat like this. And then I just go, rah, 
<gasps> and then I fly that, up. That's when the and my freak parents out had this, this these doors that used to slide. You know, the kind of the thin like wood doors you used yeah. to slide back. I ran right through it. There were splinters everywhere. I think I was about eleven years old, twelve. Crazy. <laughs> Like, this has been going on for a while. Wow. Jay. Have you yeah. been put on any medication for it? Has, <laughs> no, you guys are like, should you be in the studio? Right? Don't no, fall no, asleep, no, man. No, I'm, to I'm very intrigued by this. Yeah, like, I'm intrigued by it, too. It's no, like I'm not. You're not scaring me at all. Like, yeah, even, yeah. You, you know, at all. I'm very intrigued. And I, it's, it's fascinating. To, not in like a, I'm not, I'm fascinated by like, wow, this really is out there happening. It is like yeah. I love learning new things, and something like this is is amazing to me. It's uh, called parasomnia. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet been... you like if you're if you're ever on the road with like your your stand up buddies, they're like, "Don't get a room with Jay." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Don't or get a room with Jay. or oh. the new guy. <laughs> hey, let's bunk up together. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. or, or someone that does Jay. know about it. Yeah, put you put him with Jay. Put him with Jay, dude. And, and have a make great Jay experience. just get Jay really tired. <laughs> dude, and some crazy shit's like, gonna go what? down. Yeah. I one time I went to Hawaii with my buddy Bo, and we were staying at one of those youth hostels, okay. and the only thing they had were the two couches for us and sure enough had a major one that night i almost ran through a sliding glass door the full scream the murder sesh the whole place woke up freaking out like they were call gonna call 911, and i had to oh i had a nightmare it's, it's, it's so embarrassing after all these people are looking at you like bro what's going on just a nightmare it's yeah. crazy because like things like that <laughs> like those experiences like that are like what you hear about on the news of people having when they're like on pcp or like some crazy drugs, and you're just having them like while you go to sleep. Yeah, isn't that nice? Jeez, I have PCP episodes in my sleep, bro. <laughs> Wait, what? You thought you thought Jesus was stealing your wallet? <laughs> yeah, that is a full PCP yeah. episode. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's like, all right, so we have one wallet missing. At least my money's going to Jesus. You know? <laughs> if anybody's going to steal my money, at least you, you got it, Jesus. To heaven. Yeah, you're getting to heaven. Jesus, though. you get it all, bro. <laughs> Yeah, Damn, man. Yeah. I'm sure I think Knoxville probably saw a few episodes. He said, sure. and then he said <laughs> that you nicknamed him the A Stalker. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, no, no, that's funny. What, what, why did he get the nickname A Stalker? No, there was a time where I, uh, but back before <laughs> cell phones, you know, when you had the, 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 the caller landline, yeah, the landlines, yeah. yeah. Uh, wait, let's see, was it? Yeah, or yeah, landlines. They'd have a call right thing, so you yeah, could see he's calling. You could it, like, still have a call right. If your ID. name, if your name is like Jay Davis, it would come up Davis, or it would become up Jay Davis, right? Like, yeah. So I I called the phone company and told him my name was Anthony Stalker, but to elicit his <laughs> with, with the initial A. And so every Stalker. time I called anybody, it it's would come it. up A Stalker. <laughs> That is yeah. awesome. So if I call girls, like, hey, Stalker's calling. And it got so good, I added a second line in my house at that time. And I, I put a line in. This is the funniest, another funny story that comes from that. Like, I uh, I thought, you know, this is funny. So I call the phone company. I go, hey, uh, and I got this, like, really cool black lady. She's like, hello, AT&T, how can I help yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I go, hey, listen, um, I need to change my, my uh, it's weird, my name, but um, uh, my name is Richard big um but i like to be listed as dick yeah you, my last name's big and so it would come up and then when i call people it would come up big dick is yeah. calling right yeah so then uh i'd call people and it, it, it would say big dick is calling so i had a stalker and then big dick line and then there was a time where i was like working at, at I, by the way after all the acting classes before i got in the comedy yeah. all this was because you asked me how i got into the sunset strip yeah, and stuff yeah. so all this kind of came together I'd always been funny. We always used to play Johnny. Yeah, that, and I was always course. pranking, and yes. you know, like that guy Scott show. would yes. eat, would eat like Johnny's sandwich. So Johnny made a shit sandwich once and put it in the fridge with yeah. like lettuce and tomato, Ugh. so that the kid would take a bite of that because yep. he kept eating his food. You know this, or you know they would fuck with your toothbrushes. Yeah. You know he'd, be, you know he'd stick it in his butt, and then you know I, then, I, I used to have a roommate that was, like didn't like it that like I would like it was even though it was my. My house and like uh, I had all the furniture in the house. They were using all my stuff. You know, sometimes you get the roommates that are minimalist, but they were using all my stuff. But she didn't like it that I would eat her butter mm -hmm. or like take like scoops of her ice cream. So she would put lines in the ice cream or the butter. So if I came in and not thinking of <laughs> she it, she'd be like, and then she would complain to my wife about it. 
She'd be like, Pancho's eating my shit again. I can tell. Look. She'd be like, what the fuck is that? But yeah. like, that's funny. Like when you say that, it's it so reminds funny. me of like, like roommate shit. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Roommate. It sucks, man. Roommates. But those were fun roommate days. That's for yeah, sure. They, 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 I had some fun roommate days. But, but anyway, so yeah, like I ended up in the hotel and restaurant business anyway yeah. <laughs> after doing that. Cause you know, I was, I was doing a lot of the hotels and I was working at the sunset marquee. And then there was this guy that came in and, um, he was like a movie producer in a Ferrari and he was always hanging around Mickey Rourke and stuff like that. And then, um, he was a gambler. And then there was this, this big, like kind of gangster dude that used to do like bookie that would hang out there. So I knew all these people like celebrities and, and people are doing crazy shit, but I like everybody, yeah. everybody yeah. liked me and trusted me. Yeah. So this guy calls me up one day and he's friends with Mickey Rourke. He's like, Hey, he's like from the South. He's like, I want to, I want to do some gambling, but my, my bookie's in jail. Do you know any good bookies or anything? And I'm not even a gambler, bro. Okay. I'm just trying to be a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yo, uh, I got this guy, uh, Big Fred over here. He could hook you up, you know. I'll call him. And then I call up Big Fred. Like, this guy, he's, you know, he seems to be a movie producer. He says he wants to put bets in for him and Mickey Rourke. They got money. I don't know if I can help you out. So I become this middleman. He's like, and this guy's like Italian, you know. He's like, yeah. can you vouch for him, Jay? Can you vouch for this guy? I go, yeah. I mean, I don't really know the guy, but I'm like, I'm just like, no, I'm you, just an idiot, bro. You're green lighting it. You're I'm just green, like, yeah, 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 absolutely. Got it. I go, yeah, I can vouch for him, you know. And this guy's like a straight gangster. You know, he's like, yeah. yo. So, and he's asked me a second time. So you vouch for this guy? I'm like, yeah. Okay. Like, so then, like four or five weeks go by. Boom. I get a call from this big Fred. I'm, that's not his real name. Yeah, no. Big is in his name. Yeah, but Fred. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it. he's like, it's a good one though. He's like, uh, hey, uh, not for nothing, Jay, but you vouch for this guy, Monty. Okay. And uh, he's down about five thousand dollars right now. Oh, yeah. No. And he's not paying me. Oh no. He's not calling me back. And I'm like, what? And I go, oh man, that's not cool. Uh, and uh, I go, I'm gonna have to deal with this. So at the time, my friend who. Uh, Rusty Dooley, he, he's a comedian from the comedy store, Italian kid. His dad was a real bookie, like oh, the Chicago okay. yeah, kind of yeah, gangster yeah. Okay. background. Rusty's kind of kind of a gangster kid, you know, like he could have been, you know what I mean? But he got into comedy. He's like, dude, you can't let this guy. I, I called him and go, you know, I, I, I paid it or something. That's what I, did. I paid half of it. Oh, I go, I'm no, going to pay it. Vowed. So I vowed. So I go, let me give you. Were so this, this you, big were Fred you scared? guy. Were I was kind of scared. Okay. I go, and, and my car at the time was worth about four grand. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, that's like my life savings. <laughs> so, I mean, that's like a million dollars, you know? No, I'm freaking out. Like, I can't, I vouch for this guy. Like, and Rushy's like, I don't know what to do. So I took all the money I had and like, it was only like 2500 or something. Yeah. I go, I can give you some money. I feel bad. And the big Fred teach me a lesson. He comes over and he goes, I go, I got 2500 dude. And I count it out. And, and Rusty's like, don't count it out, you idiot. Just give it to him. Because I'm, I'm stupid. Like, I'm yeah. like, do it in the like, know? one, yeah. two, yeah, this, guy's like, this guy's like an old school gangster. Yeah. So I give him the money. And he puts his arm and goes, let me tell you something, man. That's You're a good guy, Jay. You're a good guy. Not for nothing. I'm going to go ahead and clear the debt. You don't have to pay the rest. That's really good. You at least paid that. Thank you. That's Whoa. you're you're a good guy. You're a good wow, guy. Man. So that's Whoa. good. Clear today. So now I'm trying to get the four grand from Monty, right? So I tell Monty I paid half of it. You should have told Monty you paid the whole thing. Yeah. Like or hey, whatever. I vouched yeah. for you. I I, yeah. I did, the guy came and I had to pay up. So I go knocking on the guy's door, like I'm a gangster now. Like I turn like, <laughs> get my money, man. Like I'm gonna, you know, like this. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, he's not answering his door. I know you're in there, you loser. You're a real loser. L, capital L. You lost all the money, and I vouched for you. I want my money back. Yeah, yeah. So then my friend Rusty, he's like, dude, that's not how you do it. Trust me. He goes, don't, don't you say this guy's friends with Mickey Work? I go, yeah. He goes, you got Mickey's number? I go, I actually do. I'm friends with him. He goes, okay. I'm going to call Mickey. So he goes, my dad used to have a guy named Legs Diamond that used to call him Legs Diamond because he would break legs for diamonds yeah. to get money back. Yeah. So he goes to my phone line that says Big Dick, <laughs> and he calls Mickey Rourke. <laughs> 
on the big dick line. But before he calls, we changed my answering greeting to just Frank Sinatra music. Okay, good one. Because, you know, it's Star 69, you could call it back. Yeah, yeah. He calls and leaves Mickey Rourke a number, but the, the caller ID says Big Dick. So Mickey Rourke sees a call from Big Dick coming in, right? Like Big Dick. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't answer. And my friend's like, leaves this message. He's like, hey, Mickey, how you doing? This is Legs Diamond from Chicago. I'm sorry uh, to be calling you with this information, but you got this friend named Monty. He's throwing your name around, you know, not for nothing, but... He's throwing your name around that he's making these bets, and it's not even a lot of money. We don't even care about the money. I just don't like this guy making your name look bad. Oh, and he's wow. owed $4,000, and he needs to pay. But you know what? I don't really hold you responsible. I just want you to know there's a guy out there using your name, and he's not paying his debt. Yeah. And we don't even care about the money because that's pennies to us. But yeah. I just need you to know because I'm a big fan. I love you. And he hangs oh, up. The phone God. rings back, and it just goes right to the... Uh, Answering service, okay. Frank Sinatra yes. music, okay. <laughs> and he leaves That's a message, perfect. and he's kind of scared. That's he's like, perfect. "This is Mickey. That guy Monty can lose my number. I'll tell you what. Meet me over here. I'll drive you straight to his house myself." <laughs> right? Because for like Mickey's four weeks, this guy yeah. Monty's not calling me back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, my phone rings. Twenty minutes later, it's Monty. <laughs> I answer. He's like, "What's going on? Who's this big dick?" <laughs> legs diamond guy looking for me i go yeah i mean it's out of my hands now monty i sent it over to these guys and they've got some guy named legs diamond looking for you if you don't pay this and we're legs diamond right yeah he said, well i can meet you tomorrow <laughs> i go bro it's out of my hands i don't know legs diamond but i just told him i have nothing to do with it i'll vouch for you it's on you monty at this point i'm, yeah. I'm free they freed me yeah. from it they got some guy legs diamond looking for for you how'd they get mickey's number i have no idea bro he's legs diamond you know oh, oh my the God. next thing you know boom <laughs> we go over to rusty's got this girl who's got this boyfriend and he was like brad pitt from like california like yeah. this guy was like high on like quaaludes and all kinds of stuff yeah and he's like uh he, we're, we're telling him we're going to go meet this guy, Monty, to get my money. And this guy goes, you, you need some backup? I'd like to kick somebody's ass tonight. Okay. I go, dude, we're not looking to kick anybody's <laughs> ass. I just want to get my money back. I don't even care about the four grand. I just want my 2500 Yeah. And this guy puts brass knuckles on. He goes, I'm coming with you guys, and I will <laughs> fuck somebody up. I'm going to fuck somebody up tonight. I'm like, bro, you're going to kill somebody now, and I'm going to be in jail. I just want my 2500 bucks. Yeah. I don't want anybody getting hurt. But anyway, he takes the ride with us anyway. He's half loopy yeah me rusty and we pull up and there's and we i pull out in front of a bank machine and uh you know we're thinking they're gonna you know kill us and sure enough monty comes and he gives me the 2500 i didn't try to steal the four i just got my 2500 back and i called him a loser and told him to beat it but it was kind of scary but these two guys were lurking in the background making sure nothing went down wow yeah that was crazy no way yeah Damn. but 2500 back then that's a lot that, of money. That's a lot of money. Like, like again, my like, car was four grand. Like, that could be rent for like five months back. Then. Yeah, yeah, totally. No, Dude, yeah. We're talking like, well, let's see. That was like, hmm. I guess that was like mid nineties yeah. or like like late late nineties. Okay. Yeah, that happened. That was wow. a great one. Wow. Great story. No dude. way. Yeah. So we, I think, Punch is on the same page as I. How did you get the name King of the Sunset Comedy? Well, I think what happened was around all that time I was working at that bar and I realized, bro, I had this epiphany, like I came out here to be an entertainer. Now I'm like, you know, catering to entertainers and I'm meeting all these celebrities and rock stars and giving them their drinks and giving them tables. And it was a lot of fun, but I realized, man, this is kind of like, I, I didn't really like drinking anymore i don't, I don't want to do any drugs like i already do that in my sleep yeah naturally you don't need drugs i don't like, need Casey, drugs you do yeah. not need drugs or yeah. maybe i do maybe that's a problem <laughs> they have to give me some from the pharmaceuticals but um yeah i'm just like man and and i was kind of depressed because I, I don't really want to be in the bar business you know and then i just had this epiphany like bro, i saw like thousands of people and i go i i can i, I saw an arena full of people i'm like I'm going to be there one day, you know, I want to, I want to maybe in it's like, it was almost like something like God just struck me, put me in, like, it was such an epiphany. My back went into a couch and I thought, you know, I really want to just do comedy, I think, you know, and, and it, something told me just build a stage 
Go find a stage and just start doing it. Like, build it yourself. Yeah. I had this epiphany. And the only person prior to that that I met that was a comedian was this guy, Ahmed Ahmed. I used to be a yeah. bartender at the uh, Opium Den back yeah. in the 90s, and that was a fun job. I was a bartender there. And uh, there's a whole other story. We'll, we'll have me on another time. I'll yeah. tell you that story. But boom, um, this guy is like, invite me to do comedy at this show that he was doing, like a little bar show. And I used to always think about it. I'd drive by there, and I was always too scared to do it. And I just never did it. And the only guy I knew that knew comedians. The second after I had that epiphany at the whiskey bar at the Sunset Marquee, I stood up. Ahmed Ahmed and Vince Vaughn turned the t- corner. You'd think I'd be more stoked to see Vince Vaughn, right? Like, I, I, could, I love Vince Vaughn, but like, I was like, oh my God, the only guy I know. I just had this epiphany, like literally seconds before he turned the corner. And I just was so excited to tell him, I just had this epiphany that I need to start a comedy night. You're the only guy that could, I could do it with. He's like, oh, calm down. It's hard to do that. I go, I need you. We got to do it. And then I convinced him, and then we started the Dublin's Comedy Night, which yes. took off, and that was on the Sunset Strip. No way. So, yeah, and I worked at the original Roxbury, which was on the Sunset Strip. Yep. So everything um, that came to me was because of that Sunset Strip. You yeah. Know? And that's where all the greatest comedy clubs are, Comedy Store, Laugh Factory, yeah. Improv's not too far away. And then we started this little, I thought it was going to be like 40 comics. We tore out booth number eight, put some plywood and some track lighting up there. And it became the most epic comedy show ever. You guys had like a five-year run. It was like yeah, it was five a year Tuesday run. night nights, yeah. right? Yeah, it was, it was the point where like the most famous comedians were just rolling up to, to meet me. Like Whoa. Roseanne. My friend's like, Roseanne Barr is looking for you. I'm like, what? You're lying. No, she wants to go on. Or Dice Clay would roll up in a $500,000 bill. Yeah, Dice. Are you Jay? Yeah. <laughs> Can I go on? Yeah. How much time you want me to do? And I was just joking. Like, How about five minutes? Five minutes? I'm Dice Clay. I'm joking. I'm joking. Of course, do an hour. <laughs> I was totally joking. Wow, Jay. Yeah. Really? And it became this like legendary spot. And um, I just like gravitated to learning to book, meeting all these great comedians, getting them to go on the stage. And I'd met Dave Chappelle at the bar. He came down and did it. And that's when the place really took off. Like he knighted me with into the comedy world by doing that big Irish pub night. But you also love doing stand-up. I mean, you, you're great. I love it. doing it. I just like gravitated to the opening spot and booking and producing and promoting because I'd been out here for so long. Yeah. I had a lot of connections with able to promote because I had met so many people over the years through the nightclub business. Yeah. And I had a lot of nice friends that supported it. Uh-huh. And celebrities would yeah. come out. And it became this night of like filled with like celebrities and rock stars yeah. from between Ahmed and I are, are, are because he had also been here a long time yeah. our, our our friends came together and we built this incredible comedy uh space for comedians to grow and I, was, I mean some of the best comedians yeah. today really really oh, all yeah. came out of there at that time and there was a lot of luck involved it was a free show and it was around the Sunset Strip before cell phones and all that shit so people had to pay attention and you know, there was no way to find out about it except for word of mouth. Yeah. And, and it just, just blew up, you know. Why? How come there's no comedy there still to this day? What happened? Well, Is they the were having, still there. No, the uh, place went out of business. Uh, the night they didn't go out of business. They got shut down by the city. Uh, so okay. like people don't realize this, but it's it's like footloose out there. You're like, you got to have a dance license to dance. They yeah. won't let you dance in an Irish pub. Yep. Uh, the city because they want to control it's crazy. Like they want to control, make sure you're they, not playing hip hop, but they, they don't want, want money yeah. too to yeah, give you yeah, that permit. Right. So uh, yeah, they didn't have a dance license. We had DJ crash who really yeah. is still with me today. He would do the DJ. So we would do this incredible night of comedy and then we'd break down all the tables and crash would just lay it out and we would dance the night away. It was a party. There was no cell phones, no social media. People are just having fun. Everybody's in there. No one's worried about pictures being taken. It was the best that, time ever. It, there'll never be another room no. like it because the times have ruined it. You yeah. know, like you know, all this technology has kind of hurt the good times in a way. It was it was a much better social time media back then. pretty much tattletales on you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then it was just <laughs> way more fun. <laughs> And no one's tattletaling. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted that. Now everybody's got to be, oh, what do I say? What do I do? <laughs> yeah. No, it's exactly People are that. filming me. Yeah. It sucks. I wanted to ask you something because I read it and like when you guys were doing the Dublins, uh, it, a, it, it, it was like the focus was to, to have headliners on. Like you guys wanted to have headliners. But then I read that you guys gave one guy a shot from Boston 
and he absolutely blew everyone's mind. He just fucking crushed it. This yeah. dude was Dane Cook. Yep. And like you basically gave him a shot and he just went to the stars with it. And I wanted to ask you like what like and I'm sure you've given this opportunity to, to lots of comedians and you've watched them just just blossom. Mm -hmm. What's that feeling like? Like and when you when you're seeing that happen, you're just like, oh my God, like it's, it's, it feels good. Like like it was really um, when Dublin started, like when that thing just took off within like three weeks, like it, it was like the the parting of the seas. Like it was like, wow, I finally found my purpose. Like I'd been out for so long and you know, when you're young, getting the nightclub business, you're partying, you're doing things you shouldn't do. And it, it, it takes a toll on you after a while. And that's when I had that epiphany, like you gotta get out of that that world, you know, and find something that you really drives you, that you're really passionate about. And the second we started that comedy night, I found my purpose and it was beautiful. You know, mm. it's like, I'm supposed to be doing this. Like, it was like, you know, it was almost like I was helped by by God. Like, it was like, you're, you're gonna do this and I'm gonna help you. Cause it, it's no other way to explain it. You know, when things just take off. And uh, so I was pretty, pretty stoked that I had this platform where I could help others. And I really would feel great to see others succeed. Like I love watching others succeed. And so that's always fun. But you know, these are already very talented people. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I just got lucky in a way that Dave Chappelle did my show because it, it, the, it once Dave did that room, the whole comedy community heard Dave Chappelle did it. Therefore, well, if Dave Chappelle's doing this room, we should do the room, right? Yeah. So all the best talent. Like it's not like I made them any more talented. Yeah. Dave Chappelle just made our stage gold. He opened right? the door. So then now people wanted to know me, and I'm a nobody in comedy. I didn't even know what I was doing, bro. I didn't even watch comedy specials. Yeah. yeah. But I just, were, but I have a good eye for comedy. Up. Like I know what's funny when I'm laughing my ass off. Yeah. And so I would just continue booking the funniest people, and the funniest people in the world just kept coming to me. I got lucky. That's like the help from God because I, I didn't, I didn't know they they wanted to know me, which was really weird. Like so, Dave Chappelle like made me relevant. Yeah. And so, you know, this guy, Dane Cook, comes down. And we, we were booking like 14 comedians a night, which is like, I've learned like 12 too many, you know? <laughs> but like then you don't know what you're doing. You're just like, come on, man, just do it. And it was just too much. So we had just had a discussion, Ahmed and I, you know, dude, we got to cut these shows down. There's too yeah. many comics. Yeah. I've already got the show booked. I don't want to bump anybody. This guy's like, hey, dude, can I do seven minutes? I'm like, sorry, bro. I could put you another week, but not tonight. He's like, yeah. I'm pretty funny, dude. Can I please do seven minutes? I'm like, probably not tonight. And I'm telling him no. And then uh, Alonzo Bowden comes over, who was our closer. He was there every week. He was, he was the one that helped us get it going. He's so funny. He's on my show tonight, He's actually. Funny. He's like, um, you might want to put this Dane Cook on. I did, uh, I did the, uh, the big festival with him. This guy's funny. I'll take my time and give it to him. I'm like, really? Really? Because, yeah, Whoa. take some money from me. And wow, uh, Alonzo. so Alonzo, yeah. So I'm like, all right, bro, I'll give you seven minutes. Seven minutes, dude. Okay. He goes up within like 30 seconds. It's the funniest person I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, who is this guy? What? Just ripping the plants off the wall. Like he's not just <laughs> doing comedy. He's tearing the place apart. He's yeah. throwing shit. Like I've never yeah. seen anything like it. The place is hysterics. Like people's heads are in their laps. They're laughing so hard. The roof is blowing off the place, right? Six minutes and 58 seconds. He's like, looks at his clock, goes, that's seven minutes. Thank you. I'm Dean Cook. And he goes right to me, like, like straight at me. And he goes, seven minutes. And then walks away from like, I had to follow him through the crowd. Like, I need this dude's phone number. <laughs> no Who is this guy? Way. And I had to chase like him down. Can I get your number, bro? No. I go, he goes, I might come back, bro. And I'm like, shit. You know he came he, back. That the very, next, got the very next week, here he comes at 10 yeah. o'clock. He goes, can I go on? I go, you're next, bro. Yeah, and that like was that it. Style. We put him on every week. That's that awesome great style. stories, yeah. dude. It was fun. Yeah. Those were the days. Those were the days. Wow. But there's so, a lot of good comedy. So you're still producing yeah. comedy shows now. You just said, like, you got... What's the name on tonight? Yeah, right? I got a show tonight with Nick Schwartzen and uh, Alonzo Bowden, Tom Rhodes. Where are you at tonight? Shank Forbes. Uh, Yamashiro, the cool sushi spot up in the hills. Yeah, Yamashiro. Yeah, yeah I, I created a room up They're there. Great. And okay. it's kind of this VIP premiere How many people? comedy show. Only about 85. That's not bad. It's like That's intimate, but the, the, it's low ceilings. You're right on it. Yeah. You're yeah. in the show. It's yeah. pretty cool. And, and you, you can eat smart. sushi. You can yeah. have sushi and watch comedy. 
puts it's on really like five cool. comedians. Each of them get like 15 It's really minutes. beautiful. It's really I want to come see this. I'm coming. Yeah. I'm come, come tonight. Check come tonight. Can't make it tonight. Anytime. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep in touch. We'll go together. Yeah. Ponch and I will come. Yeah. Anytime. I got to get back to my area. I'm going to Hawaii. That's another thing that's weird. Like the <laughs> owner, I don't know if this is true or not. So Johnny Knoxville, if you're, if you're listening. But the owner, Ely, claims that he knows Johnny. And so Yamashiro is this huge 100-year-old restaurant that sits on top of the mountain above mm, Magic Castle. Beautiful. Beautiful view. So there's two little lounges on the side. One's like a banquet room where they did weddings. That's where I do my... Okay. My show. Then the other side's like this cool little lounge. Uh, sometimes we'll do comedy over there if it's a little slower. But uh, the owner says that you were going to build like your own whiskey lounge on that side. I don't know if that's true or not, but how ironic, right? Like Knox was going to build a whiskey lounge? On the other side the other of it, side? Where, where I'm doing comedy on one side, he would have his whiskey bar on the other, <laughs> which would be really weird. I don't know if that's true. You guys what, are reunited. What happened, what, Knox, to the whiskey lounge? Or yeah. some kind of, that's what I yeah. was told by Ely. I don't yeah. know if that's true, but let we me We want know. the whiskey lounge. Yeah, because yeah, so. that would be cool. Like All these years, like... <laughs> It's just coincidentally, he's doing his lounge on one yeah. side and I'm doing comedy on the other. Isn't that crazy? That'd be fun. I thought that was serendipity. That'd be yeah, good. Especially if it does happen. Yeah. Wow. I don't even know if it's true, but it sounded cool. Do you do it? So is it every Tuesday? Are you still, is that your yeah, night? Yeah, it's usually every Tuesday. Sometimes we switch it up, you know, like I'll do a Friday here and there. Um, and I'm also doing every Wednesday at the OG Cannabis Lounge. Is that your show that you throw? That's my show every Wednesday and that's free to get in and, um, it's it's a one of a kind spot. It's a gorgeous cafe uh -huh. where you can smoke cannabis and and do edibles, yeah. cannabis, whatever. So it's the opposite of everything else. You can smoke inside, but you can't drink inside, mm. and you can't smoke on the patio, but you can drink on the patio. Ah, okay. Um, but the shows have been great. People are digging, especially cannabis lovers. Um, it's a full weed bar. Dude, what's better? And than it's beautiful. And like just laughing your. And ass the off. food is amazing. The chef is Jonah. Uh, he's an incredible chef good food do you it's a lot of fun. that's every wednesday at the cannabis og cannabis lounge in west hollywood it's on la brea in lexington your, yeah, always fun to pop in free to get in it's best to get a reservation if you how, follow how me are, on how instagram are, how are stoners Dude, as here's the good thing about stoners they the, don't heckle yeah. that i know yeah. they but don't heckle. do they do they bring the laughs you're looking for no laughs a little no, different no sometimes, i've done i've seen yeah. and i've done comedy in front of stoners and I'm like, are they even digging this? Bro, as long as they're smiling, you're winning. <laughs> you don't have to hear laughter. That's you right. are a lot. And if you look out there and they're just like, no laugh come out. Yeah. They just stare at you and smile. Uh, that's the they're same. baked. Yeah. But you know what? Like, if you hate, like, drunk hecklers, it's the best place to perform. <laughs> Because but no one's going to stand up. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Dude, don't say that, man. Not <laughs> cool. They don't give a shit. You could talk about anything you want. They'll just stare at you like, yeah, man, that's cool. I've, I've noticed that. I've, so, I've done. But we get them laughing still. Yeah. Okay. I did, it yeah. doesn't, it's not that, that drunk, hearty laugh crowd. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, like, like Dublin's. That was a wild place. When you got that room, you could feel it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a little different, but. It's still a good place to work out your comedy, and people appreciate it. So nice. It's whatever you like. Jay, do you ever like? I I see you as like someone that would would run a like a comedy club. Do you ever? Has that yeah. ever been like an interest to you to like it is. It's, actually run it and it be yours? Well, yeah, I'm working on that really? as we speak. Like I I want to keep it on the low because it's so hard, bro. But I've been I've been raising money to try to build my own club, and you know we'll see if it comes to fruition. But I'm definitely working towards that goal. If anyone deserves something like that is you, man. Like I'm working. The love that that you've shown for 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 this community and like like what you've done for it and what you've done for other comedians, like Jesus, like you you deserve it, dude. I appreciate it. Well, I'm working on it, so yeah. we'll see what happens. If that's meant to be, it'll be just like Dublin's. The oh, floodgates will open and we'll make it happen. Yeah. But I'm definitely working hard on that goal. JD comedy. Yeah. yeah. Oh right. yeah. Thanks, guys. Big dick comedy. <laughs> big dick Ace comedy. Stalker. Yeah, Ace big stalker. dick coming at you. <laughs> I mean, I might as well be. A, I'm a comedy stalker. Like I'm relentless. I text people every week. Like, the hey, if you don't like, if they say stop, I just delete them from my phone. Like, if you don't like my comedy shows yeah. and you don't know good comedy, I'm mm -hmm. doing you a favor by inviting you. So I, I'm relentless with texting people. He does people. the best comedy show that so. I've ever been to as far as the people that he puts up the lineup. Yeah. It, and, and the people that come to it, that come and support Jay, it's, it's pretty amazing, man. 
Dude, if you can't have fun at the comedy stalker room, yeah, that's I don't right. know what to tell you. That's right. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say something too. And and what's crazy is that, um, what not crazy, but what, one of the things I was reading too is that with your shows, you when you were doing it with Ahmed, Ahmed, obviously after a while it just took off by itself. But you and him, like you guys, weren't doing bringers at all. It was you and him promoting that's right. the whole show, which is the complete opposite of what producers do nowadays. Yeah. Now it's all on the stand-ups to like be able to like bring enough people to fill the room. And I'm always like, dude, that makes it so it's I, I get it, but it's also one of those things where you're like, I just want to focus on my comedy and making people laugh. I don't want to focus on you coming up to me going, How many people do you bring? You're getting less time. You said that you know what I mean? It's, it's Yeah, shitty. it doesn't seem like the way to do it, you know. I mean, we were very fortunate that like we, we had a lot of connections from putting our time and just living off the Sunset Strip for so many years and how many relationships we'd built and friendships we built around the community of Los Angeles. So we were able to pretty much pack it out, even though we didn't have anyone that famous. Our friends supported us, so it was always a packed house. And then what would happen is we'd put the best comedians on and they'd want to bring their friends anyway because it's a killer show. So that'd be the show they would promote naturally yeah. and I never even had to ask them. So that would be just more people come in from their friends, right? Like, so... In a way that I was very lucky that it worked out that way. I would never do bringer bringer yeah. shows. Like it's always nice when a comic brings their friends too. But yeah, absolutely. Like yeah, I don't really out. expect it because like that's my job. When I promote and produce a show, that's on me. I'm trying to give you the best quality stage time so that you can grow as an artist. Yeah. And that's usually what I like to do. Um, these are the people you should be working with, Punch. <laughs> yeah, I try, like, man. And Jake gives me a shot whenever he can. But yeah. you know, like you know, I yeah. need to get you on more for sure. Yeah. You know, I I like people like you, bro. Because you're like you're a professional skateboarder, you're a professional skateboarder, like prof you're a professional comedian. You know, you, you by professional means you work harder than the next person. Yeah. That's what makes you a professional. Yeah. I work with professional comedians, even as you're coming up. You know, I get people asking me on Instagram all the time, "Can you book me on your show?" I don't even know you, bro. Put earn it. You know, and they're yeah. like, "What's that mean? Earn it? How do I earn it?" You earn it. You, you become a go, professional. You gotta go through you, the you, stages. You 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 gotta like show up all the yeah. time support like boom just stay patient work hard you will earn it like you're a professional you know like people that work hard like dean del rey i, I helped dean get into comedy and he's, he's a professional really funny, bro dude. works hard you work hard so i see comedians that not if they're working their ass off i see that and those are the people i want to try to help as they're coming up and it's hard because i've been doing this for over 25 years now so the comics i work with are some of the elites Right. So why would I put you as an open micer on over some of my elite friends that want to do the show? Yeah. Like have some common sense, you know, yeah. like be respectful. Like I can't just put you on when I got these guys that want to do it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. like I, I do my best to get those that work hard. Like if I have a famous comic like tonight, uh, Nick Schwartz, and I know we're going to sell out. I can throw a guy on, you know, that's a hard worker. And give them like a seven, eight minute spot on a really killer show to help them to grow as well. And that feels good. Like you want to do that. You got to help that, that, the, that, that the young comedians too. That feels good to that, to the comic too. <clears throat> yeah. You know, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air. But as I got older, I stopped making my rounds, you know. I got to get out there more to make my rounds to find those hard workers. Because it's unfair to them if I'm not out searching for them as well. You know, yeah. um, I was going to ask, uh, you said uh, that one of the people that, re that was looking for you at Dublin's was Roseanne Barr. Was she... Uh, and she's one of my 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 favorite stand up comed female comedians. Was was she was she great? Amazing. In fact, she was the last comedian to perform at Dublin's. The very last wow. comedian. Uh. So that's what happened is um, they didn't have a dance license. We were dancing. They had a manager at Dublin's at the time, and he went down to the city, and they had. A, he says, "Listen, we don't we don't care about your your tickets and your your." your fines that you're giving us for dancing we're going to pay your fine and keep dancing because we make more money paying your fines and dancing so yes. we're not going to stop dancing just yes. keep finance and he, he was stupid and told him that and then one night i hear this uh little you know it was west hollywood so this little uh gay counselor guy like city councilman's like you believe this guy said that he's just gonna pay our fines and keep dancing well let me tell you something we're gonna find something else and we're gonna shut you down Whoa. and sure enough they came in they shut it down bro we did a tuesday night show the next day we found out they locked it up they took their liquor license closed it out boom dublin's on sunset was over they shut them down for other things, too. They found any little thing and just shut it down, took their liquor license. Why wouldn't the city 
Just go, okay, if they want to keep paying fines every time. I don't know. We're making the fine money. That's free money to the city. The complaints left and right. Who knows? Who's yeah. complaining about people dancing, having a good time? I know. That's the weirdest <laughs> thing, right? Like, I can't figure it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not going to be complaining about people dancing and having a good it time. It was an end of an era. But, yeah. you know, that, that helped us all to grow. You got, you know, it was, it was devastating because we had worked so hard to build that up. And then it was just over. And the room itself is what was so special. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd never stepped foot back in that building after that. Wow. We just had to keep going. But then, you know, thanks. After that, Dan Cook was nice enough to bring me on the road with him. Yeah. And then he put me on that HBO show with him, which was really nice. Yeah. So he did a lot for my career and helped me to grow as a comedian. Isn't this dude great? Super and, great. And I got to do arenas with Dane Cook. So yeah. that wow. vision I had arena. of an arena, it wasn't my fans, was, but, you know, uh, was, I, got to, I got to do 20,000 seaters with him, you know? How was that feeling? Incredible, bro. And I was thankful that he shared that with me. It was, it was amazing. And a lot of comics are doing that today. It's pretty yeah. incredible. And they share that with the other comics. And I'm seeing a lot of comics getting to do what I did. And it's the best feeling ever. Like, the more people, the better. Like, you know, if you yeah. get half of 20,000 laughing, you got 10,000 people laughing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good feeling. That's bigger than if you get them all laughing, it's really a great feeling. Yeah. But, you know, there was one time it was my birthday and we were doing um, like 20,000 down in Orlando or somewhere uh, at a college. And Dane at the end of the show dane goes let's do a party for your birthday after like it was just me and dane on the show so i do this thing i go out at the end and i go hey i'm gonna call uh let's see uh uh um i think it was chili's or something no what was it like bennigan's i think it was bennigan's bad you remember the ben yeah. like an applebee's yeah. type place and um so i go guys everybody be quiet i, I quiet down twenty thousand people i go it's my birthday and we're all gonna go to Bennigan's, which I, we saw it was right around the corner. So I'm gonna call and make a reservation for 15,000 people. <laughs> and, and so I was, it felt so good, dude. I was able to get the whole stadium. It's not gonna work if you guys are making noise. We gotta get quiet. And I call on the speaker phone. And the lady's like, hi, this is Abby Bennigan's. I go, hey, um, can I make a reservation for my birthday tonight? Sure, how many people? I go, ah. I don't know, about 15,000. And they go, <laughs> right? So then we come, come after the show, bro. We roll up. There's like 4,000 people like around the front. Like you've never seen a Bennigan's. There's, it's like sardines in the Bennigan's. There's a manager in a suit. Nobody else is coming in. There's like, then, then there's like people holding signs and shit. I felt like the Beatles, right? We're in this like like SUV. We get people are rocking the SUV and shit. And that, that's only four thousand people. It felt yeah. like a million. Yeah. We get out. Yeah. They're like, wait, they gotta let them in. It's Dane and Jay. It's so they part the seat, and the manager's like, okay, come on in. We go in. You've never seen a Bennigan's with so many people in it. There was people on the tables and shit. It was wow. just people everywhere. Then there was people in there that were at the show that worked there. They go, we called and go, no, this is real. They're coming. <laughs> they came to work in just whatever outfit they came to the concert in, and they were working wow. in there. The place was crazy. That Bennigan's made more money that night than they've ever made. No. And then Dane got up on a table and uh, got everyone to sing me happy birthday at the Bennigan's, and the place was just electric. That was one of my most memorable times in comedy. And I thank Dane Cook for that that moment. That was awesome. That thank awesome. you, Dane, man. Yeah, that's Holy awesome. Shit. That's and uh, great, man. and on that note, yeah. that let's end big. Yeah. That's a big one to end. Yeah. We want to thank you for coming on our podcast, yeah, man. bro. It was an Dude, honor. You no, know, everyone is... that I meet, whenever I'm at Yamashoro, and I say, uh, uh, "Yeah, Jay Davis," everyone claims to be your best friend. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all, nice. Oh to yeah, know. he's my best friend. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm like everyone. I'm going to start saying friends. that now. Well, you guys are definitely yeah, my I'm, best I'm, friends. Yeah. yeah you know Jay, Jay Davis? Yeah, he's my best friend. Okay, there <laughs> you go. <laughs> are you really his best friend? Do you know about his night terrors? Yes. <laughs> maybe they all. don't yeah, know yeah. me that well. well oh, maybe I they will. Maybe you should sleep at his house one yeah. night. Yeah. Are you really best friends? <laughs> yeah. If you can take a night of sleep terrors. <laughs> that should be one of your new jackass skits. Someone having to sleep with me after I'm very exhausted. God, <laughs> Not yeah, still. That's one. I just won't sleep for like three days and then put somebody in a room with me. And That's have him sleep one. next to me. That's That'd be a good one. Because yeah, I could really have sleeper. a real a yeah. real night terror. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on yeah, our show, Yeah, thanks man. for coming out, uh, I appreciate it. And yeah. uh, by the way, Knoxville, I'm so proud of you and all your success you've had. You deserve it. 
success for you guys forever. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. One last thing. We got to thank our sponsor, Nima, dot com. Go there. Put in the in the coupon, Little Rev, L-I-L-R-E-V. Save 15% and get yourself feeling good. It's the best supplement Absolutely. I take. Poncho has been taken in. He's like, I can't get rid of this boner. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you didn't tell me this was for this. <laughs>